Hello everybody, this is Chris from Vizio Guy, and I'm here today to talk to you about my Vizio Radial Elements tool that I've just finished developing. Now, it's not really a tool that you have to install and enable the add-in or anything complicated like that. It's really just a smart shape that allows you to easily create radial elements that you might find in a clock or a circular gauge or a spokes of a bicycle tire, anything like that. that takes a lot of skill and time to draw precisely using Vizio's built-in drawing tools. Now, the classic example is a clock here. You can see I've got 12 little bits around the hour, and they're equally spaced and nicely drawn so that they're all exactly the same. But creating something like this in Vizio is actually quite difficult unless you're really, really good at using Vizio's drawing tools. Now, I can demonstrate how you might do it. I'll get the circle tool and I'll draw a couple circles, and I'm just going to do it really rough here because we don't want to waste time on this. But the point is I can draw a bunch of lines through the circles, and I would have to take a lot more time to precisely rotate and orientate these things. But once I've got them all drawn, I can go to Shape, Operations, Fragment, and I get all the pieces cut. I can delete the pieces I don't want. and select the pieces I want to keep, going shape, operations, combine, I can right click, format, fill, and turn them to this funny looking red. Now that took a lot of time just to do it right here and it's not even precise or well drawn. So I thought to myself, there must be a better way, and in fact if you understand the shape sheet and the capabilities of smart shapes, you know that there is a better way. So what I did is I created this funny looking thing, and first I'm going to turn off the design mode so we don't get distracted by that. But you can see this thing has a variable number of items. I can go up and pick two. If I hit the down arrow on this drop down, I can increase the number of tick marks. Just right there, we've saved a lot of time. If I, I can change the starting angle. So let's give it a 20 degree starting angle and it rotates a little bit. And we'll put that back to zero for a future use. You can see also I've got end caps that are arced or straight. You don't really notice this until you have a smaller number of arcs. You can see there they're straight and they're, they're arced, so they're actually circular. I don't know if that shows up very well. Let's keep going smaller. Five. Okay. Arced and straight. You can see the difference there. Let's leave it as arced. And let's go back to 12 because we're going to build a clock for our very first example. Now I turned off earlier this design mode and I'm going to turn it back on by right clicking the shape instead of using the shape data field. And you'll see this funny looking set of lines and two yellow control handles. What is that all about? Well the easiest way to discover is to just start pulling on the handles and see what happens. And you can see that this is some sort of designer for each tick mark around the circle. The easiest way to think about this is that if you fill up the rectangle completely using the control handles. You can go to either side with them, by the way. That the perfect rectangle in our, shall we call it our right side up rectangular world design mode, translates to a perfect wedge in circle world over here in the actual shape. So you can, I think for humans, it's easier to understand a rectangle and configure that the way they want it and then have the smarts of the shape position them and transform them into wedges around the circle. So if we want points, if we want to make a perfect wedges that don't go all the way to the center, we just move all move this handle up. If we want it to be more pointy on the outside, we can do that all the way to a point and we get a nice sun. We can make things, we can get, add a little space on the inside by bringing it in. It doesn't make sense down, down here. As you go to the center, the spacing goes to zero by necessity, but when we're out here, we've got some space to play with. You can actually go outside the box, too, and get all sorts of crazy things. And you know, I won't promise what's going to happen when you do that. But, yeah, it's kind of like the old spirograph you might have had when you were a kid, if you're old enough to remember spirograph. So, back to our clock metaphor. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Let's make nice little tick marks about this big looks good. Once you have this the way you want it, you could turn off design mode, but you don't really need to because 
I recommend not giving this shape as it is to your users, but just using it as a tool to create the radial elements you need, and then blasting the smarts. So I'm going to control drag a copy over here to work with, and I like the way it looks. It's the right number of tick marks, equally spaced. Then I can go to Shape, Operations, Fragment, and destroy the smarts and cut this into individual pieces. So there. I get a, this mess from the design mode, just quickly select and delete that, and you can see now I've got 12 tick marks. They don't have any of the overheads of the smarts built into the original shape, and they're just perfectly drawn graphical elements that I can use in any shape I want. So I'm going to put them all together using operations combine. It makes one solid shape out of them all. You can see that. If I click on the pencil tool or the line tool, you can see there's all these vertices around the circle. And now that I'm happy with that, I can create a clock shape. So you can see I did just those steps, used the radial elements tool to create the tick marks for my clock, then just added a few circles, some fill formatting, and a couple of points in the middle to represent the hands of the clock. That's all there is to it. This would have taken 15 minutes to 45 minutes to draw by hand. Now you can do it in 10 seconds. Pretty cool. So, when I was looking at this, when I was playing with this, I thought to myself, oh wow, if you ignore all the overlapping lines, that looks kind of like a gear. But if I fragment the shape now the way it is, my design stuff is going to overlap my actual shape. So that's not going to be good. So what I'll do is, when I create my copy that I'm going to destroy, turn off the design mode first, then go shape, operations fragment get rid of the circle in the middle you can see it's got all these overlapping bits but Visio has a nice operation called union under shape operations union that allows you to blend everything back together and give you a nice gear shape it's pretty cool that would have taken a long time to draw by hand with the radial elements tool it's a snap so similarly I was playing around with complete wedges all the way to the middle. I didn't really want to make a Trivial Pursuit game piece. What I really wanted was a half circle gauge. And once I had this drawn, I was able to fragment the shape, get rid of half of it, and quickly create a green zone, red zone safety gauge. Pretty simple. I was also playing around with what happens when I've got two elements. I thought, well, that's kind of odd, just having two elements around a circle. But it looked really neat, so I fragmented that, duplicated it, and made this interesting warning symbol or center point symbol. And if you get really carried away and make a couple different copies of your shapes, you can create this neat looking compass rose. Well, I hope that helps you better understand how to use the shape. It's a combination of right clicking to turn design mode on and off and using the shape data fields. If you don't see the shape data window, remember it's on under the view menu right here, so you can turn it on and off. And uh, yeah, have fun playing with the Radio Elements tool, and let us know what you've created back on the forum. Thanks for watching. Bye.